explain the shades. Did you think when you're going through being human trafficked, when you're going, when you're in the brothel, when you're going from Tel Aviv, you're going to Canada, when you're being um, positioned this way and distributed this way, was there a point when you're going through it that you thought that you would stand here today to speak your story and inspire others the way you are doing? Oh, honestly, I thought that I got to be dead a million times over. I would never imagine I would be a mom. I would never imagine I'm going to be Christian. I would never imagine that I'm going to be a wife. I would never have imagined any of this life that I live right now. All I knew that I'm going to end up in jail, cemetery, or like overdose. Like that was my, my way. And actually somebody, I think like I was 25, somebody asked me, what is your dreams? For the first time, you know, we're asking our children, what do you dream about? What do you want to be when you grow up? What is your aspiration? I, I've been asked this when I was like 25 years old and I'm thinking dreams. What is dreams? What is the dreams? Because I didn't know I'm going to live. So to have this life and have this opportunity, it's amazing. But then even when I become wife and a mother, this imposter syndrome haunted me too. Who do you think you are to have healthy children after everything you've done? Who do you think you are to have a healthy marriage and a husband who loves you? Who do you think you are? And all this stuff, it was so messy and hard. And I didn't speak about it for 20 years. Actually. Um, it, there is another thing too. I didn't, well, I didn't tell my husband about the story, but before we got married, I actually wrote him um, six page letter because I chose when I met that man who I fell in love with, I chose not to lie to him. And if you ever encounter with alcoholic, drug addict, or you see the movies, like lying, it's number one thing that we do to survive. It's like our our default mechanism to get what we want, what we need or have to get. So when I got with him, I promised to myself that I'm never going to lie to him. So I wrote him a letter because I knew I would not marry me. So I want him to have the choice. And in that moment, I knew that he can walk away and I have to let him go and be okay with that. But I took that step because I want to have trust in our marriage. And honestly, I cry. I wrote this, like I cry so much and I already buried that relationship because I knew after he read it, he said, he would say, I don't need women like you are. But um, he literally, he said, uh, I don't want to read this. This is between you and God. You can burn that. You know, I love you for who you are now. So for 12 years, like it's never, if if I wouldn't be writing the book and it wouldn't go public, I probably would never tell this to anyone. Did you feel unworthy of being a wife, of being a mother? Absolutely. Not good enough. I'm not normal. I'm... Um, not worthy i'm i'm not lovable i am um i'm i don't have right to be happy i don't have right to have this man like who did like like that imposter syndrome again kick in so definitely all that stuff you know so what do you want to tell um young men and women who maybe are finding their upbringing, their childhood difficult, and they may look to you, Lena, and be like, wow, she's such a pillar of strength. I can learn so much from her. What do you want to share with those in the next generation? Yeah, absolutely. I think number one, to have grace for yourself. You know, know that your love, that your life is valuable, that you are significant, no matter what you went through. And um, 
I would definitely recommend write the journal or uh, letter and share this with someone for support. Then you're going to actually um, almost prove that it's true, whatever you're saying, because there is going to be a person who love you. You think you are alone, but you are not alone. Even like there is always one person who's going to help you, who's going to support you. And um, another one too, I would recommend with affirmations, like watch what you're saying to yourself, to yourself. Like, honestly, I heard somebody saying just recently, and I thought, man, like, why didn't you hear this long time ago? It was the, um, somebody said, uh, the stuff that we say to ourselves, we would not tell other person. We would not say that to our friend. We would not say that to our family. So we don't treat ourselves well because of the trauma that we're going through. So watch what you're saying. Honestly, change this stuff. And sometimes it's going to be hard work when like I told myself for so long that I was worthless and hopeless and helpless and broken. And it was like a broken record, like this negative thoughts. Now I look in the mirror, like, and I said to myself, you're beautiful. And I, and, and I giggle in the mirror and I'm not perfect. Trust me, guys. I have like three kids. My body's still like not the shape that I want it. Like my hair sometimes not the way I want it, but I still concentrate on the stuff that I do like, you know, and I look into my eyes and I look in, in my smile. Or I said to myself in the morning, oh, you feel good today. You know, something always kind of like perked me up. I don't need anybody else like affirmation or compliments or anything like that it's beautiful to have that but honestly if you wait for somebody else all the time do it it's never gonna happen but it's very important pick the phrase like even when you said do you feel unworthy so if that's like your problem or not good enough just start writing i'm good enough i'm lovable i am beautiful so whatever triggers you and just start saying it. And you know what? It's going to feel like a lie in the beginning because you told yourself that you're unlovable, unworthy, um, unwanted for so long because of whatever happened. But it's a lie. But because we did it over and over again, your brain already took it and accepted it. So you need to change that, reprogram that with the positive affirmation because even in the bible said like your tongue can lift you up or like destroy you so just watch what you're saying to yourself and catch catch yourself just create awareness Ooh, why in this situation i say myself i'm stupid you know why do i'm saying to myself like oh i hate you why would you say that because oh you did mistake okay so mistake it's a mistake doesn't mean you're stupid it just experience. So, so look into those ways when you're not treating yourself nicely and just give yourself grace. And when you good and kind to yourself, you can be less offended, whatever, like other people, other people's stuff, like it's not your problem, <laughs> you know, just take care of yourself, love yourself and know that you are not alone. And there's going to be people who understand you, who went through the same thing, you know, the one, you know, the black sheep, and this is not happening to you. It just happened. And this experience, and you can overcome, and you can trust again, and love again. And there's going to be someone who's going to love you so much that, like, you have no idea. Just don't give up, and just go little by little. Everything going to get better. <laughs> I'm gonna go get some more.